Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Gorus Maximus. It's by Inside Up Games, designed by Connor McGoy and illustrated by Quan Chai Moria. It is a game in which you'll be playing a trick taking of sorts, and it is for two to eight players. It takes about a half an hour to maybe 45 minutes to play the game. In the game Gorus Maximus, you're going to be basically playing as battling gladiators in a ring, and depending on the number of players, how many cards you're going to add to the deck. It's a simple trick-taking game in the sense that you're going to be using cards in your hand to play onto the field, and then of course the higher card based on the cards that are relevant in that specific scenario are going to win the trick. However, there's some added bonuses or negatives that you could say. Sometimes in a trick you want to lose because negative points will come your way if you win. Other times you're going to want to win because you can gain bonus points. And at the end of every round, you can get a total bonus of five points if you successfully are able to achieve the zero card that can potentially win you the game. Now, of course, that's not just it—not just going around in circles and playing a like like something like a tournament at Camelot, which is an amazing game. Gorus Maximus is a little different in the style of it's no longer—it's not really the RPG -S aspect of uh, Camelot, but instead you can actually play team games if you want. It's up to eight players, so you can play on teams of two or however you want to do that, and it actually entices you to want to work with your neighbors. Now, of course you can't be doing table talk or talking uh, during the game with your opponents or your uh, collaborators. Nevertheless, though, you can think about how you want to strategize the game. Very interesting, unique little game and tons of violence and gore in this. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here we have the contents for Gorus Maximus, and as you can see, it's going to come with a box as well as a rule book. It'll also come with point counters, and these things are just one, two, and three. Uh, first person to three points is the winner, or team to three is the winner. That could be the case as well. You're also going to get this rose counter, and this is a little bit larger than we'll be seeing. And it'll come with some kind of uh, little counter as well here that will signify which one of these suits is going to be the most, the prominent suit of the round. So this is how it's going to be used. You're also going to get a bunch of cards. Now, for each set of players, you're going to be adding another suit. So in a two-player game, you'll have two suits of cards and a three, three, four, four, five, five. And then at the bottom uh, right-hand corner of all these cards, it'll say plus six, plus seven, and plus eight. And you'll simply add those cards to the deck when you want to increase the number of players. So this is the contents of the game. Let's go ahead and go above and I will tell you how to play it. Like I was saying before, when playing Gorus Maximus, depending on the player count is how it's going to work. In a two-player game, you're simply going to shuffle the two sets of cards uh, together to form a deck, give 10 cards to each player, and then as the players play, Play their tricks, they're going to be drawing a card from the deck, which is very different than other deck uh, than other trick playing games. You're going to draw cards from the deck until the deck runs out, and players are going to score their tricks. And whether they score points or not is a different thing, which we'll get to. But in a multiplayer game, you're simply going to add more sets uh, or more suits to the deck, and you're going to just deal out 10 cards to everybody, and you're not going to draw, which is very important. To begin, let's say a three player game, you're simply going to have the one of the players start, uh, the dealer will go ahead and start, and simply place a card down. In which case, that that suit will become the prominent suit. So in this case, if he played a blue card, blue would become the prominent suit. Everyone would have to play a blue. Now the other option is to play the, a card of the same type as the card last played. So if I played a blue four, you could play a green four, in which that would change the prominent color to green. Now if you didn't have a card in your hand that was blue, and that was the card that was played to begin with, however, uh, you did have maybe a green card, right, and that was, the prominent color was green. Whenever you play a prominent card and everybody else just plays the card of the, of the suit that was chosen, you will actually win unless the card gets, unless somebody else plays a card that matches and changes the prominent color. Now, if you don't have um, a card of a suit that has been played, you can choose any color card that you want. So if you don't have a prominent card uh, suit, then you can go ahead and choose maybe red or yellow. It's up to you. But you're going to continue playing. And the person that's going to win is either A, the prominent color of the highest number, or B, the suit that was played first, whoever played the highest number is going to win. Uh, and also, not only that, but when you win, you're going to get all of the cards that were placed down. And the cards are going to have different numbers. There's a two over here, right? Uh, sometimes they're worth no points. Sometimes they're going to be worth one point. Other times they're going to be worth zero or five. The zero here is going to actually be interesting because you can go ahead and play it uh, down. And if it matches the color of the prominent at the end of the round, so if at the end of the round the prominent color was green, then this is going to be worth five points to you if you have this card. Very useful, right? However, another additional thing is during the game, you're also going to be trying to 
to uh, get rid of cards, like this one here is an 8, but it's minus 4 points. So if somebody plays a red 9, you're going to want to play this red 8, because that's going to guarantee you that you're not going to get this card. It's going to go to somebody else, and they're going to lose points for that round. Additionally, when you're playing with teams, it's pretty simple. You're just going to be playing kind of by yourself, but you can cooperate in a manner in which uh, whenever uh, somebody scores in a round, so if I won, me and my partner would both get all of the cards, and we're kind of going to kind of amplify by those points. After everybody has played their cards down, that would signify the end of a round, and the, whoever has the most points is going to win for that round. So you get one of these guys here, you play another round, and so on and so forth, until the game is over and somebody has acquired three of these points. That's a basic idea. Let me go ahead and show you in, uh, in theory how it works. <laughs> All right, so I went ahead and set up a four-player game of Gorus Maximus, and to make it more interesting, I've also made it so it could be a team battle. These two versus these two. This player is the dealer, so he's going to go ahead and start, and normally you're not going to show the cards to anybody. These are your secret hand, even if you're playing with your uh, teammate, so these guys are not going to see each other's cards. However, for the sake of an example, we'll go ahead and reveal the cards here for each of these hands, so you guys will get a good look-see at what the hands are going to look like for this game and how it's going to kind of work. All right, so now you've got a good idea. You want to I organize them as well. Now this player is going to start and he's going to choose any color he wants. The rose is currently off of a prominent color and he'll pick this one here. It's a really strong card to start with. That is an 11 and that is blue. So this card is going to, or this is going to sign signify that the prominent color is blue. And then it's going to go in a back and forth motion. So this team and now this team, which he will go ahead and choose a card. Now what he can choose to do are two things, right? He can choose to play a blue card or he can play a card of the same color. So for instance, he could go ahead and play this yellow, but it's also an 11. Right, which will change the prominent color to yellow. Now remember, when uh, at the end of the round, the prominent color that is the highest is always going to be the winner, regardless of what the co first card that is played is played. However, you can only play the color of the card that is played unless you have a copy. So here we have this 11. So now we know the prominent color has changed to 11. This player is now going to go and look through his hand, and uh, uh, he's going to have to play the first card that was played through the round. So he has to play a blue one, unfortunately. Uh, but remember, yellow's still going to win. So in this case, his friend knows that he's going to win here. So he's going to try and guarantee us, guarantee some points here. So he'll go ahead and drop this one right here. Oh, no, sorry, blue. Oh, he has to play this one. So, okay. Well, this is going to score. So one, two, and three. Prominent color is going to be yellow here. And so because of that, that means that... Uh, this team is going to score three points. You just go ahead and set them aside over here. And then, of course, the winner is going to be the one that starts. So this player is the one who won. He's going to get to choose a color, and he will choose... Let's go with something interesting, right? We'll choose a nine that is blue, which will then go to this guy's turn here, and he's got to play a blue one. Remember, though, the prominence yellow, so if he can switch it, if he can play a yellow, that's great. Uh, but unfortunately, he still has a blue card, so he'll play that one here. This player has no blue card, which is super nice, which means he can play any other color that he wants. So he's going to play a 12 of yellow, because that's the prominent color, which means he's going to necessarily, he might most likely going to win this round. Let's see this character. Okay, this guy's got a six, a 10, and a zero. He'll play this six because it's worth no points then the yellow is going to go to this team once again that's another three points and this player was the one who won so he's going to go ahead and start the next round he will go ahead and play pink and so then this player is going to go ahead and get to decide this guy's got a 12 pink though so that beats the 11 this player also has pink so i have to play this and then this player has pink as well he doesn't want to play this one though because he knows that they're going to win the round so he'll instead play this one even though it's worth no points and then this team is going to score these two points and it's going to go over here. And the game is going to continue. Now, there's a couple interesting aspects about this game. First of all, there's negatives, and when you know you're going to lose a round, you can drop one of these guys and hand it over to your opponents. And also, you have these zeros. There's a zero of each suit of each color, and these are going to basically, at the end of the round, uh, whatever the prominent color is, so if the prominent color is yellow, right, then this is going to be worth five points, and the rest of them will be worth zero. So they can score you some high-end points at the end of the game. And you're going to tally up the points, and whoever has the most is going to take home a victory. So in this case, at the end right here, this round, this team is going to take one point. You would simply take all the cards, shuffle them up again, and continue to the next round playing with the same teammates. You could also choose to not play with teammates. You could choose to simply play by yourself. Uh, it's up to you guys how you want to do it. That's the basic aspect of Gorus Maximus and how to play. So what do I think about Gorus Maximus? Well, I've gone through pretty much all there is to go about the game. Of course, there's additional cards, additional suits, additional colors, and there's ways to gain points. What makes this an interesting trick-taking game is the fact that 
you're not always going to want to win. Sometimes you're going to want to lose, and sometimes on a team, you can kind of work together without actually saying anything to give the opponent's team negative points. What also makes the game very interesting is as a team aspect. You could play a five-player game where it's two players versus two other players versus one singular player, and that one singular player doesn't necessarily mean he's going to lose because he's able to control hands. He's going to be much more um, in the way of making his own choices by himself instead of having to work with another player, but it just kind of gives kind of an interesting aspect to the basic trick-taking mechanism. Now, when we look at a game like uh, uh, the Camelot game, right? Uh, Tournament Camelot. That's a very, very good, it's an excellent trick-taking game. I think probably one game of the year last year for me or, or really, really close up there. Um, this one has a lot of similarities in the fact that you can play the same type. Instead of them getting flipped over, it changes the prominent color. This is an interesting dynamic with the whole changing of the guard, basically, so to speak. And prominent colors being the most important thing and kind of signifying to each other how you want to play the game and how you want to distribute the points um, to... Know, know when to cut your losses and know when you need to try and win. Also, those zeros can be very useful. You know if uh, the prominent color is going to be there at the end if you want to keep that zero and play it. Or you might try and whistle somebody out of the prominent color or of, of the zero by play, by changing up the way the prominent colors are and then at the very end switching it. So there's a bunch of little strategy in this game. Now, it's not as complex, I think, as... And, as strategic maybe as Tournament Camelot, but that game has got a lot in it. Uh, this has a little bit less components, but what is here is really nice. And the different aspects that I think are the, the two strongest aspects to the game is A, the changing of the guard, which is the prominent colors here, and B, the fact that you can play in teams, which is super cool as well. This does have that nice theme to it. It has that like gladiator theme. And I got it before I even go off the, the rails here and start talking about the art, um, the, the fact that you can um, score points together or separately is pretty cool as well. I like that aspect. The art, okay? You're either going to hate this art or love it, first of all. It's gory, it's bloody, it's a mess, it's not kids kid-friendly, um, but I like it a lot. <laughs> I, I like this kind of cartoony, bloody, violent style artwork. It reminds me of the uh, Battle Wizards game, the Spell Wars, Epic Spell Wars, uh, for the Battle Wizards, the, where they got the heads going everywhere and flying off and stuff like that. Uh, it has that stuff going on for it. It's got gladiator combat, and it feels like you're fighting against it with your gladiators. And um, there's the bears and all kinds of crazy stuff in this game. So if you like that style, the Epic Spell Wars style artwork, you're going to be enticed with this game. And I think that game, because it's such a prominent uh, game in my friend group, this one, it drew me to this one as well. Uh, this one doesn't disappoint. If you like trick-taking games, I definitely suggest you check it out, especially if you like team-based trick-taking games, which I don't think I've seen any of. All right, that's all I got to say about this one. Roll the credits. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like gory games, if you like trick-taking games, and if you like the gladiator theme, you're going to be down with this. I like Roman. I like a little bit of blood and guts, but it's all cartoony. And I do really, really enjoy trick-taking games. Like I said, Tournament Camelot is a favorite of mine, so this one works really well for me. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. we got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to having a blood-splattered arena-style combat with you later. It's hot. It's hot in here.